In this video, I'm going to show you how to avoid error messages when you're writing formulas. And let's just hop right into our example, which is an inventory system that has um, a products table with all a bunch of different uh, clothing items that we're selling. So imagine it's like a clothing store and then um, a record for when we receive items into our inventory and uh, a table for where we've sold items. And this is the table where I'm going to focus our, our formula that we're going to write today that's going to eliminate errors. So I often encourage folks to use the primary field, that's the first column of every Airtable table, uh, to create a unique description for the row, right, for each row. And one of the best ways to do that is often to write a formula that concatenates a few different of the items here. So this table holds records of sales that we've made. Each sale has product, a quantity, a price, and a date. And so in order to have a unique description of that record, you want to combine those attributes in, uh, in our primary field here. So here, if I open this up, you can see that we uh, concatenated the quantity, the product ID, and then the date. And I suppose we could have added price too for this one. I'm just going to leave it as the quantity, product, and date. And if you're not familiar with this form of concatenation, basically we can just use these ampersands to um, add these different pieces together. And then I'm using quotations in between to add spaces. So it's, you know, the quantity plus a space plus the product ID plus a space plus the um, month, day, year format of the date sold. And if I hop out of this and then just create a new record without entering any information, we see an error here. And the error is showing because the formula is not able to do one of the things that we asked it to do. So if I go back into here, looking at these three different things I wanted to display, well, the first two, if those values don't exist, it's just gonna leave it blank. So this wouldn't produce an error. But this last one, we actually asked it to format a date. And so if there's no date, then it's gonna produce an error. So I know that this is the cause for the error. And just to test my assumption, so it's good to test your assumption. Let's go ahead and add a date here. And sure enough, our error went away when we have our date. So now that we know the cause of the error, we can work to make sure we don't get that error when we have a blank value. And it's worth saying that I always do want to have a date and a record here. So it doesn't concern me that much that I get the error value because I know that I'm going to enter the date. And so it's just a temporary period of time where this error is showing, but it's still kind of annoying. It just makes it feel like my base isn't really working that well when I see these errors. And what I really want to know, because I know the error is tied to the date, is I want to know when we're missing a date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this formula field again. And looking at this formula we've written using the date time format function, what I want to do is write an if statement that says if there isn't a date, then either leave it blank or actually give me an, uh, a more specific error message saying you're missing a date. Um, otherwise, if there is a date, then proceed as normal. So we can do that by, since this is our, our function in question here, I'm going to wrap it in an if statement. And so I'm going to say if date sold, comma. And so just to review how an if statement works, you have a logical comparison, and then you have the value if true, and then the value if false, meaning and if true, meaning if this logical comparison is true. So in this case, if I just say if date sold, what I'm asking basically is, is there anything in this date sold field? Because if there is, it's going to return true. And if it's empty, then it's going to return false. And that's just something that we know about how Airtable works. It's going to treat a blank value as false in an if statement, and it's going to treat a, uh, a filled value as true, as long as you're not also um, asking it to perform another comparison. So we're saying if date sold is filled, then format date sold uh, like we asked it to before. But then we can add the value of false. And so if I wanted to just leave it blank, I could just add some quotations like this, close it off, and I'd be good. Save, confirm change. And now if I remove my date here, I just see nothing. So that's one way to do it. If I actually want to notify whoever has added this record that they need to add the date field here, then I can just make this, take this one step further. And so within these quotations, I could just say missing date. 
confirm change. And now I've got this little missing date message, which is much more descriptive and much nicer to look at than an error message. Now that I know I'm missing a date, I can just go through, let's add all of our information here. So I want to sell five yellow t-shirts for $20 each and I'm going to sell them on January 16th. And so there we go. So that is how to eliminate error messages and to use an if statement to actually add your own personalized and descriptive error messages to a formula. If after this, you're curious to learn more about primary fields, I recommend checking out this video where I go through uh, the importance of primary fields and all the best practices for uh, get, using them to get the most out of your Airtable base. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.